Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at Fiber Shop. Fiber Shop, a real-time hair texture generator version 2.3 is now available. And a huge shout out to the folks at CG Power for making this available. So the last time we talked about Fiber Shop, it was just a very early release. And this is now something that a whole lot of people have used in several projects and the updates just keeps coming. So today we're going to take a look at some of the interesting things that is now available with Fiber Shop 2.3 and also see some of the very impressive ways that you can start working with it. Now, for those who like to take a look at this and pick it up and start working with it, it is worth knowing that Fiber Shop is available for free as a trial version. And of course, there's just a whole lot of things that you can now do with it. So getting started, once you have Fiber Shop downloaded, you can see that the UI looks extremely simple. Right here is where your canvas is. You get a couple of tools from here and your modifiers exist right there. So. For you to create a block of hair, all you need to do is click on the plus sign and you have a block of hair that you can start working with. If you don't want that, you can click right here, right click and click on delete to get that out of the way. Now, the very first hair which you're going to get here is your main hair, which is like the very first block of hair that you have. You can increase and play with the width of that. You can also play with the depth, all right? And of course, if you like to play with the density, you can also do the same thing. And for those who like to play with the length, you can also play with the length of this. Now, depending on what you like to do, you might also want to play with the seeding. So you can play with the seeding like so. And in most cases, you might also want to play with the randomness. So depending on what you like to get, you can now do that. Now, this is just the main hair. The hair actually has a couple of modifiers that you can work with. So we're looking at the five major modifiers that comes with this. The first one, which I like to explore is the noise. So you can add a couple of noise so you want to get some noise like so yes you can if you want the noise to be controlled by a given graph of course you can do that so we can go over to the strength section and we only need this noise somewhere within the tip so i can bring this all the way down and then we can have that right about a point like so so you can see we only have that happening there if we need to get even way more stuff i can click on that get the clumping so we can clump this in, we can play with the weight if we want that. And we can also, you know, just go ahead and make this sort of fly away. Now with this done, most of you guys will kind of see this as a 2D thing. This isn't just 2D, this is also being done in 3D. So to flip this to 3D, all you need to do is click on this button right here, switch over to the 3D viewport. And right over here, you can see the volume of hair that you have. So you actually have real fiber hair living and breathing right here but you know the way this tool is built is just so impressive that you actually don't need to bother about looking at this thing in 3d as every single thing you do within the 2d just simply holds up with that done if you click right here you can also do some bending so let's throw in a couple of bend for this one so i can you know bend this a little and you can choose to reposition this stuff so if you like to bend everything you can simply Reposition this stuff the way you want. You have this graph as well, depending on what you want to get. You also have just a lot of graphs going on here that just makes the hair creation process even super easily. Speaking about making things easy, it makes sense to also mention one beautiful new feature that is now here. So if we go over and add a new block of hair, which I will move over to this point, and let's say, for example, you know, we probably just want to keep this. I'm just going to click right here and lock this UV so we don't get to tamper with it. And I'm just going to click and switch over to this one. So if you go over to the main hair, instead of struggling through with this, you know, playing with it, you can now hand draw your hair. So to do this is very simple. Click on the hand draw mode, click on draw, and there you have your brushes. So in this case, if you like to create some hair like so, let's say you want to create like the eyebrow, of course you can okay uh if you also want to create some some hair say maybe you want to create a couple of hair for the goatee for your model of course you can so we can also go in and make some hair cards like so and this is just you know it's just incredible the kind of things you can do so you can simply go in and start painting this hair however you want and once you're done with this you can switch to the hide and unhide 
And from here, you will be able to see what you have. So you can use this to get rid of some of this stuff. Okay. If you don't want to have them and you can also turn this back on. So in this case, you have all of this here and you can now proceed to export it. Now if we flip back and take a look at what we were working on before. This also applies. So if you would like to switch over from, you know, the default way of making your stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and click right here. And if you click and switch to the hand drawing mode, you can also proceed to start creating stuff by hand. Now, once you're done making the model the way you want it, you can now jump over and go over to the bake section and start baking this. Now, it makes sense to note that if you don't want to have this, you can either proceed to lock it or hide it. But in this case, I'm just going to let that be and focus on this other one. Let's actually go ahead and delete that because we don't want to have that. And of course, if we like to bake just this one, we can go over to the bake and color, select the map type that we want, and then click on the word bake map. And that is basically how easy it is. And this way, you now have all the necessary maps that you need. If you would like to start styling this and adding extra stuff, you can do that. So to do it, you need to click on the filter, add a filter, select the kind of filter you want to add, and start having fun with it. I'm just going to go ahead and start off with the root to tip filter. In this case, if I like to give the tip a couple of uh, colors. So let's say we would like to give it this sort of green. We can get that. And of course, I'm switching these to screen. So we can have just that screen like stuff. And we can drop the intensity a little bit like that. If you like to add more filters, there's also a couple more filters that you can add. So if you want to add some gradient filter, you can do that. You can also simply, you know, make some changes to the gradient if you want to have that. But in this case, you know, we don't want any of this. I'm just going to go ahead and turn this off and also turn this one off. And once you're done, click on the export button, select the outputs folder and also select the name. So now that we have this here, I'm going to go ahead and turn on fiber as mesh so that we can export the plane, which would be used to apply the texture itself. And of course, if you don't want any of these maps, you can turn them off and you can simply switch from PNG to JPEG or TGA files. And once you're ready to rumble, click on the export button and this will totally export this entire thing out. So with this exported, what we need to do is dive over to our DCZ app of choice. In this case, we're using Blender and see how this actually works with it. So with Blender simply open right here, what we need to do is simply bring in that folder. So the folder where we exported our stuff is right here. And you can see that we have the source file itself. The textures exist here. We exported some meshes. You can find them there. And also we have the fiber card. Now, in most cases, this FBX file will not load into Blender. So it's best to save this one for apps like Mamoset, Maya, and all that. But if you need something you can work with, then you should use the fiber card. So the fiber card is one that is available that we can use with Blender. So the best thing to do is just go ahead and import it. All right. So with this here, let's get rid of the queue. So once we have this here, the next thing we need to do is drag out a new panel, switch this over to shader editor. And then because we have the node wrangler up and running, we need to just simply select the principal shader and add a texture setup. For those who have no idea how to set up the node wrangler, that's pretty simple. Go over to edit, go over to preference and then type in the word node and you can find the node wrangler right here. So it just simply helps you to set this thing up really quick. And once you're ready, let's go in and grab all of that, copy and paste that one more time and drag this down. So I'll wire the color of this particular one over to alpha and then we would proceed to load those textures in. The textures that we already have, I'm just going to go in, click on open, find these textures where they are and load them in. So I already have the first one loaded in. So I'm also loading the second one as well. And then the next thing which we need to do is switch over to EV where we can see this in action. So if we move this, you can see what we have here in EV. Let's actually go ahead and bring this down so that you guys can see that. And if we switch this over to cycles, you would also notice that we have something looking even way better. So in this case, if you want to start styling this hair, of course you can. Let's just subdivide this panel and then switch over and turn this to simple. So once you have that there, let's also go ahead and apply this. If you press the tab key, you now notice that you can start styling this hair however you want directly here in Blender. And most of you guys might be asking, what about Eevee? How do we work with this in Eevee? And of course, how you can work with this in Eevee 
is pretty simple. So let's back up a bit and then drag this all the way out. So if you're working with Eevee, let's switch this over to Eevee actually. So if you're working with Eevee, all you need to do is go over to where you have the options and change the blending mode to alpha clip. And this way you would get something looking nice or you can even set this to the alpha hash and that also looks pretty nice. So depending on what you want to do, you can now start styling your hair however you want. So a huge shout out to the folks at CGPAL for making this beautiful real-time hair texture generator possible. And it makes sense to see that they continually develop the fiber shop as this is something that looks pretty cool. So for those who like to test this, you want to create some amazing hair and you're just wondering how to get started. You don't know how to bake hair textures and you just want to make something cool, then you should consider checking out the Fiber Shop. And of course, you can go in and download Fiber Shop right now for free and test it out. And of course, if you like to use this for personal projects or maybe you want to use it for indie, the prizes are right there and you can consider checking them out for yourself. And that's about it. For those who like to take a look at this, links to this is going to be in the description, so do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.